Welcome to this Sunday service from St. Columbus Church in Ennis, County Clare, with the churches of Kilnasula and Christchurch, Spanish Point. While Mothering Sunday and Mother's Day have been embraced with enthusiasm, Father's Day as a comparative newcomer was often considered a bit of an embarrassment. Frankly, in many ways it still is. But this may well be to do with dysfunctional notions of what is held to be masculine. In many ways, the church doesn't help. We only have to consider what a sad, diminished figure St. Joseph represents, often depicted as aged and rather shambling. He disappears from the scene almost as soon as we hear of him. But it would be a grave error indeed to forget the role of Joseph. Sadly consigned by history to a bit part, in reality he must have been a remarkable man, not only brave and resourceful, but in his gentleness and compassion he taught Jesus to be a man. May we too, as a society, learn to nurture the gentler side of the masculine. And so we start our service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You are the never-ceasing open gift of love. We turn in upon ourselves. Lord, have mercy. You live beyond all centres of power. We seek to enclose your grace. Christ, have mercy. You rejoice in a multitude of names. We try to pin you down. Lord, have mercy. May the power of heaven protect us this day and circle us with the blessing of peace. May Christ, our Lord and loving friend, protect us this day and circle us with affection and love. May the Spirit of Truth, who dwells in our hearts, protect us this day and circle and fill us with joy. Amen. And so we pray. Faithful Creator, whose mercy never fails, deepen our faithfulness to you and to your living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the letter to the Romans. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 5, verses 1 to 8. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we are still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. Here ends the reading. Now hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus. Now hear the gospel of Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. 
Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brothers Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Here ends the reading. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father's Day is a rather odd day. It has never really captured the popular imagination like Mother's Day or Mothering Sunday. And while the Church holds a Mothering Sunday celebration, as far as the lectionary concerned, today is the second Sunday after Trinity, not a hint of Dad about it. Mothering Sunday, of course, goes back a long way, a very long way, with its roots in Neolithic man. The Romans also kept a festival for the goddess Sibylle, which was later taken over by the Christians as Laetare Sunday, to honour the Virgin Mary and the Mother Church. Mother's Day became the secular version, a combination of cards, flowers and perhaps poorly cooked breakfast disasters. Father's Day is the comparative new boy. The first Father's Day is believed to have taken place in 1908 at a Methodist church in West Virginia and some other churches followed suit. But it was many years before the day was officially adopted. In fact, it almost fell off the calendar. While Mother's Day was embraced with enthusiasm, Father's Day was considered a bit of an embarrassment. Frankly, in many ways, it still is. That tells us a lot about ourselves and the fact that about the only people who really enthuse about Father's Day are retailers. Click on any shopping website or visit any store and you will find a certain blokey, laddish range of products being pushed, a stereotypical, narrowly drawn, rather immature definition of what it is to be a man. And look at most television advertising today, Stephen Fry once said that every relationship has a grown-up and a silly person. Psychologists would recognise this as the way that people in a relationship can swap roles as need dictates. Sometimes being a parent to a partner, feeling like a child, sometimes reversed. But look at TV advertising and you can see a consistent dynamic being played out. Gone are the days of the bimbo blonde and the competent male figure, and good job too. But now it is replaced with the hopeless dad, the pathetic male, the sport-watching father and son tutted at, met with rolling eyes and an indulgent smile from the girlfriend or wife 
who shows him how to operate the cooker, the gadget, read the shopping list, or dress himself. We have now entered the era of the infantilized male, the pathetic bloke, the trivial lad. This kind of thinking, in another way, has also entered our schools, where increasing numbers of boys are diagnosed with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, autism, or any number of new conditions with which to label our children. Now, no doubt some children are truly afflicted, but many others are labelled as a problem merely because they are learning in an environment where female behaviour has become normative and boys rushing around in circles, wrestling each other and banging into things is seen as a medical condition. No doubt, just William would have a team of educational psychologists advising his anxious parents, dosing him with Ritalin and offering him regular counselling. And if certain aspects of male behaviour are in danger of being pathologised, well, others are being denied. I remember being at a training session when I was a curate and the visiting presenter spoke to us of the need to be in touch with our feminine side, at least the men present. I'm sure he was trying to be constructive, but actually what he was saying was deeply troubling because it perpetuated a stereotype, as if certain traits are allowed, even obligatory to be male, such as being goal-oriented, activity-focused and uni-taskers, which might at times also be bad things. But when it comes to more compassionate human virtues, these are denied to originate in men and instead they are forced to borrow them from women. No wonder young male suicides are rocketing as our society squeezes them from both directions, with their true nature being denied and suppressed. The other great danger, of course, is somehow to communicate that gentleness and empathy are not masculine values. And yet, of course, they are. When any man shows love and kindness, we express not our feminine side, but the gentle and loving side of our masculinity. When a man holds a child in his arms, when he cares for the needy or the sick, when he comforts those who are upset and sad, when he puts an arm round a friend or smiles to say goodbye or cuddles a much-loved pet, when he opens a door or makes room for a car to pull in, when he raises a glass, shares a joke or prays for those around him. He expresses that side of a man that is gentle, giving, loving and kind. He expresses a God-given compassion and a capacity to place others before himself that is as male as it is also female. In many ways, the church doesn't help we only have to consider what a sad, diminished figure St. Joseph represents, often depicted as aged and rather shambling. He disappears from the scene almost as soon as we hear of him. In part because the church was so anxious to highlight the virginity of Mary, they couldn't face the possibility that a young and vital husband might love her and raise more children with her. But it would be a grave error indeed to forget the role of Joseph. Sadly consigned by history to a bit part and rarely depicted as anything other than a dutiful attendant, but in reality he must have been a remarkable man. Not only does he stand by Mary, Joseph proves himself to be a very resourceful protector and guide. He shepherds his family across huge distances, evading extreme danger. He cares for them, provides for them, and moreover, he provides such a model of fatherhood that when Jesus seeks to name God, he uses a word that he utters with respect and love, Abba, Father a form of the word that connotes intimacy and warmth. 
It was Joseph who brought up his son to respect women and to honour children, to touch lepers and rejected outsiders, who taught his son to seek the heart, not the dull letter of the law, and who taught his son never to grovel to oppressors, to fight injustice, to live joyfully and to die with dignity and courage. He taught Jesus to be a man by being the model of manhood to his adopted son. Surely the lessons Jesus learnt at Joseph's knee are as important to our understanding of him as is our knowledge of the Father at whose right hand he sits. For let us listen to some of the words of the son he raised. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. The gentleness and compassion of, of Jesus are because of his masculinity, not despite it. The love he showed others came in part from the nature born in him, but also from the nurture he was shown from the lessons he learned at the workbench and the lathe, at the temple where he worshipped with men of the village as a boy and as a man. As a father of two boys, I pray that we will learn in our society to nurture the gentleness, goodness and holiness that lies within and as a member of that society, I pray that we will allow our men to be all that they can be, all that they are called to be, for all our sakes. Amen. We are pilgrims along the way of life. Therefore, let us remind ourselves of the path of faith that has brought us to this time and place. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now pray for our church, for ourselves and neighbours, and for the needs of the whole world. Lord, we are called to serve you by promoting that which is good for others, by seeking the healing of others, by giving of ourselves to others, by striving to share our love with those around us, not grudgingly or reservedly, with conditions and limitations, but fully, generously, abundantly. When we stumble, lift us up. When we fall, help us to try again. Christ be with us, around and beside us. We pray for all who are deeply in debt and cannot repay, especially for those countries where national debt is crippling where economies are failing or broken, for people who are consigned to poverty, hardship and suffering without respite and without hope. Christ be with us, around and beside us. We hold before you all who are outcasts, for the broken-hearted and the broken in spirit, for those who suffer prejudice and discrimination, the indifference and callousness of others, 
for those who find themselves in desperate situations, in relationships that are broken, for families in crisis, for those who are anxious for their health or the health of a loved one. Christ be with us, around and beside us. We give thanks for all those in our society who devote themselves to the well-being of others, for hospital staff, GPs and local nurses and caregivers, for those who are staff in residential homes and carers for people in their own homes. We give thanks for all those who are in our charities, social services and community groups give their time and energies in the service of others. Christ be with us, around and beside us. Lord Jesus, you have gone before us and prepared a place for us. We remember all those who have died in these recent days and years long past as we light a candle in our hearts to honour them and entrust them to your mercy and loving welcome. May they fly straight home into your loving embrace. Christ be with us, around and beside us. And now a few moments for our own concerns and prayers for those on our hearts. Together, we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen May the untamed welcome of the Father accept us for who we are. May the incarnation of the Word touch and hold us close. May the wandering of the Spirit help us to risk ourselves for love. And the blessing of God the Holy Three be among you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.